Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and it's been an interesting night for SpaceX fans. Uh, well, I, I'm not, and I'm not talking about Elon probably having coronavirus. I hope he recovers just fine. But uh, yeah, no, we're talking about the drama over in Boca Chica related to SN8, the prototype Starship vehicle, which uh, is the first one fully assembled and uh, was you know, getting prepared for flight. So SN8, as you may be, if you've been keeping track, it's the first one that uses the, the new alloy. They pressure tested it up um, and they rolled it out to the pad in, in October. They did a test firing of all three engines without the nose cone attached um, on October 20th. Then they rolled out a nose cone and attached it. And so the last few days, they've been trying to test fire the engines with the nose cone attached. And it isn't just like a cosmetic nose cone on the front. There's a critical part to this, and that is the header tanks. So the header tanks are smaller tanks that are supposed to feed the engines during the landing procedure. They only have a small amount of fuel. I believe it's something like 22 tons in the nose and maybe about eight tons in the middle. And the reason they're so far apart is because they want to balance the center of mass for the vehicle. The reason they use these small tanks is that when the thing is in flight and it wants to perform this flip maneuver and relight the engines, it has to be sure that it can draw propellant from the tanks. And if you have the large tanks, and as the thing you know performs this flip maneuver, it'll cause the propellant to slosh around inside the larger tanks. So by using smaller tanks, they reduce the slosh and that reduces the amount of voids or bubbles that get sucked into the engines. Because when you're pulling tons of fuel through the engines very rapidly and you hit a bubble, that can destroy your turbo pumps, right? It can really damage things. So they've been trying to demonstrate that the new SN8 prototype can light the engines from these. Yesterday, or sorry, not yesterday, Wednesday, we had a burn a test, a test fire, and it looked great. There were a lot of sparks that went flying, and that immediately caused consternation for tank watchers. If you, There was lots of live streams, of course, you know, Everyday Astronaut and NASA Space Flight. I, I was sort of sitting there looking at this and drawing lines back from the sparks to figure out where they came from. And it looked like they were all converging on a point underneath the rocket. It also looked like the they were bright until the engines sort of stopped burning and the illumination was reduced and then they faded out. So their illumination, their brightness was correlated with the brightness of the engine. That meant that they weren't like hot things that were you know emitting light on their own. And so most people believe, based on this, that it was debris, very likely bits of concrete or tiles which are used uh, underneath the vehicle to protect the surface from the, uh, you know, the heat of the rocket engine. So uh, that, that meant that there wasn't the, the rocket being damaged, but there is concern when you have anything like that that's throwing debris off at high speed. What happens if some of the debris comes back and hits under the vehicle? That could be a bad thing. Um, but I guess they went and said, okay, everything's fine. They went for another test the following day, last night. And that was even more spectacular. It looked like two engines fired. We also saw some sparks again. Um, so we started to wonder what was going on. Then we saw something dripping from underneath the rocket. Uh, we weren't sure if this is like some sort of uh, cryogenic liquid, but it probably wasn't because we didn't see huge amounts of... Uh, you know, uh, we didn't see lots of gas being produced or vapor being produced. Uh, it, it might be that that was bits of the engine because Elon came on Twitter very quickly and said, we've had a bit of a problem. Looks like we've lost all pneumatic pressure in the rocket, in the vehicle. And uh, it looks like one of the engines has probably had some sort of problem. It might have, uh, you know, blown up its test manifold, its you know intake manifold, or blown up a pre burner or something. Something energetic has damaged the engine, and has also damaged the pneumatic system. The danger with that is that the valves that control propellant flow throughout the vehicle are pneumatically actuated, so they were stuck with a vehicle where they couldn't open the valves to reduce the pressure. That header tank had tons of liquid oxygen in it and it was heating up and as it heats up that oxygen boils and that increases the pressure inside that tank. We've seen that these tanks can handle like seven or eight bar of pressure but we've also seen what happens when these tanks exceed their pressure and fail and there was some real concern 
that this tank might fail and destroy the prototype. We did find out, also Elon revealed that yes, there was a burst disc and they were hoping that would pop. A burst disc is a sheet of metal that you put into a pipe and it blocks the pipe, but it's got a pattern usually scratched onto it like an X shape and they cut that just to a specific depth so that when the pressure on one side hits a certain amount, it'll cause the disc to pop reliably. But there's a bit of slop in there and there was also concern that maybe the welding on the new tank wasn't perfectly up to standard because of course we've had issues here there and with previous ones so there was some real you know drama going on as we watched this rocket hoping that the pressure would relieve via the burst disc rather than the whole nose popping off thankfully we did eventually see gas leaking out the top and we thought the day was saved and and, I've heard, and we've seen now that there are people back at the pad i think the road closures have been limited li uh, lifted you know we've seen in the past where they've had to wait a couple of days with a pressurized tanks on a vehicle so this is actually a lot faster turnaround so as of right now we don't know the exact status but it's presumed that they will at least need to replace an engine on sn8 Maybe something else got damaged, we don't know. Uh, if they do need to like scrap the entire vehicle, there's an SN9 is already sitting in the high bay, so it's getting ready. If they do just replace an engine, presumably they'll have to do another round of test fires on the pad. And then if everything's going fine, they will be able to then fly the vehicle up to 15 kilometers and have it drop down and light its engines and hopefully aim for the, the landing pad. Presumably when it's falling, they'll target it in such a way that it doesn't hit or have a chance of hitting anything important. That one might logically presume they're going to have it descend over the sea and then pull out of the dive and uh, you know, land on the pad. But I, I don't know exactly what that plan is. It might be that it's easier for to have them aim for land because then if it crashes, it'll be easier for them to clean it up. Uh, yeah, I don't know. All excitement down in Boca Chica. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>